Hello, Classical Conversations parent. Congratulations, you made it to week 12. You're halfway through the school year, or if you're not there, you will be very soon. And you may be wondering, now what should I do over winter break? Well, um, I'm gonna share with you today what my plan is for my family, what activities we're gonna do, including links to everything, so that if you don't already have a plan for the break, you can steal mine. First of all, hi, my name is Caitlin. I am a CC mom, this is our fourth year. I have four kids, two of them are in CC Foundations, um, and I make videos sharing how I organize and prep for classical conversations and other homeschooling related, related topics. So you can check out my playlist about that if you want to see others. Um, just in case you are brand new, CC um, Classical Conversations is a homeschooling program. I have videos talking about that, but um, it is 24 weeks out of the school year, 12 in the fall semester and 12 in the spring semester. Because of that, um, most of us, I know not every community is the same, most of us finish sometime in November. Um, we are done. We finished at the very beginning of November. I know other communities are on like week eight and so they still have several weeks to go and we'll go to closer to December. But uh, I would say it's safe, I would say it is safe to say the majority of us have a pretty big break around Christmas time, maybe December and January or November, December, somewhere in there, you have a pretty big break. And so you may be wondering, what should I do um, with myself during that break? Well, first of all, I want to tell you it's okay to do nothing. Well, I mean, you do need to probably still continue homeschooling in order to fulfill your state's requirements for homeschooling days or hours or however your state does it. As far as CC goes, if you just wanna take a break, that's okay. So, you know, if you needed someone's permission to let you just not even worry about memory work or reviewing or anything over the break, that's fine, especially if your littles are very small or whatever works for your family. So don't feel like you have to do all the things over break. It's fine to take like an actual break if you want. But if you do want to continue reviewing over the break, maybe you have a child that's going for memory master and you wanna make sure that they've really solidified the first 12 weeks. Maybe your kids are, you know, older and you're really wanting to make sure that they have mastered these things. Maybe you just want to keep going with the routine. Maybe you missed a couple of weeks and you're trying to catch up. Whatever it is, um, if you wanna continue through the break, we're not, obviously we're not introducing new material. So maybe you wanna kind of have a plan. So I'm gonna share with you what we are going to do. So up to this point during the year, I've been following this memory work review schedule that um, I got from Half a Hundred Acre Woods. I'll link it below. I'll link everything below that I talk about today. Um, but it kind of has you go back and loop through previous weeks at the current week. So for example, during week 12 or after we did our week 12 community day, then one day uh, we reviewed week 12 as well as week 11 and week eight. And then another day we did week 12 as well as week uh, 10, six and five. So she kind of like has a schedule mapped out for you that goes along with the 24 weeks of CC. But when it came time to like, we have this giant break between weeks 12 and week 13, what do I wanna do? So I decided, to instead of doing it like this, where it's like you do week 10 and we do week four, um, to do it by subject just for some variety because, um, you know, just make, mix it up a little bit. But also sometimes for me, it's just easier. Like let's do all the history at once. I open up the app and we just scroll through the history and do all of it at once instead of hopping around from week to week. So what I did is I made myself a schedule and it's just taken the seven memory work subjects, broken them up so that every week we were reviewing each of the subjects and we'll do all 12 weeks on that day. So on Monday, we will review history and Latin. On Tuesday, we will review the timeline. On Wednesday, science and English. On Thursday, math. And on Friday, geography. Just repeat that every single week. And so that way, it's really easy. And my plan for each day is we will run through all the memory work for that subject or those two subjects if I've put two together for one day. And then we will do some sort of hands-on activity for the go along with them. Um, so for Monday, history and Latin. So Monday we are in the car quite a bit because of the lessons that my kids do. And so I picked two that it was really easy to just listen to and sing on the app. Um, and then that have fairly simple activities that we can do later at home because my kids have already pretty well mastered those. So you mix this up to work with your schedule. But for me, I wanna do history and Latin on the same day. As we're driving, we will just listen to all of the history and all of the Latin and sing through those um, different memory work 
items. And then I have two activities. If you watched my cycle two prep video from back in the summer, some of this will be familiar to you because I showed it back then. Um, some of it will be new, but I have these history cycle two matchups. And so it has the dates on one side and then a particular item in history on the other side and they match them up. I've got weeks one through 12 on one side and I mean, one through six on one side and seven through 12 on the other side. And so use a dry erase marker and match them. So my oldest, he's, he does want to do Memory Master. And so we've been working on that this year. Um, he knows all of the, uh, the songs just fine, but sometimes the dates can get tricky. So I thought this would be a good way for him to practice and solidify those dates as we're kind of working on getting this like really good in his memory. So that'll just be an easy little activity for him to work on. And I plan like they'll do these activities every week. So um, like, unless we decide we're tired of them or they're too easy or they're too hard, but the plan is like, this will just be his once a week thing. So like on Monday, which is history day for us during the break, we'll do this. For Latin, I have this conjugation chart. I showed this in my prep video, um, but it has, uh, Velcro dots and then I have little bitty Velcro things with the words on them and so here like you know the Latin especially since we do that the same one for two weeks in a row like my kids definitely have the songs down but this will be good to help with just solidifying that practicing with it something hands-on um, for them to put them in order all right Tuesday is timeline and we're just gonna do the good old-fashioned timeline sort so I've got all the timeline cards here and I intend to scramble them up, give them to the boys and let them put them back in order just to practice. I'm planning to let them work together because that's a pretty big task. All the cards for 12 weeks. Um, also my six year old, he is reading a little bit but not like all these harder, larger words and so they can just kind of work together. So um, that's all we'll do on timeline day and then probably listen to the song to practice that. Now, Wednesday is science and English. So for English, um, I wanted a chart like this for the pronouns that we have been learning. Um, and I looked all over CC Connected and could not find that. So I made one myself. Typically, I'm not a like worksheet creator. I am like a curator of things other people have created and I share that with you. I don't typically make my own stuff, but um, couldn't find what I was looking for, so I made it. And so what I've made, and this I have put on my blog, it's free. You don't have to put an email or anything, um, but I will leave a link below so you can go get it. It's not on CC Connected. It most everything else is, but um, I made a pronoun chart. Same idea as the Latin chart, but it's just got nominative, objective, possessive, pro possessive pronoun adjectives, and reflexive pronouns. So this chart you can just use as like a reference, and then I did a blank one. So I could do the same thing that we did with Latin where I printed one off and laminated it, cut it out, and then printed off the blank one, laminated it, and left it whole. And then that way the kids can put the pronouns in the correct spots. Now, I, instead of using the Velcro dots, I did magnets. So I have a cookie sheet here and the paper on the cookie sheet. And then I've got all of the pronouns magnetized there. And so the kids can just, you know, stick them on there. Anyway, I'm not putting them in the right spot, but just like that. The reason I did that um, was because I wanted to have a blank one that my oldest could then also write on. This way uh, we can put it on the cookie sheet and use the magnets to put them on that way. And then I can also just hand him this blank one and he can write it in with a dry erase marker. So um, for pronouns, you know, we have a song that we have used and we've sung through it and they I feel like they know them pretty well, but um, not well enough for Memory Master. And so this was one area that I wanted us to focus on working on that. While I was creating a worksheet, I also made this one for the indefinite pronouns. Um, and it's just laminated. He can dry erase right on it. This is weeks 11, 12, and 13. So it's actually going into next semester a little bit. But the song that we use covers all of them at once. So we've already learned all of them. So anyway, he can just write on there and practice writing out the indefinite pronouns. Um, so those are linked on my blog. You can check those out and use those for your family if you would like them. For science, science was an area where I felt like 
Um, we've learned the memory work fairly well, so we'll, of course, again, go through the memory work on our science today, but we have not had a chance to really expand on much of the science this year. It's just, you know, I have a toddler, and it's been one of those years where it's like kind of survival mode and we do minimum to get stuff done. And so I was like, this is a good time to expand on the science. So I recently got a subscription for Awesome Science TV, which is a um, science video streaming uh, website that was created by homeschool families for anyone, but specifically um, kind of geared towards homeschool families and it's Bible based. Um, and they have also aligned it with classical conversations. So they have a video that goes with each week of science for each cycle. And so, um, you know, so week one, what are the days of creation? There's a video and, you know, phases of the moon and what are biomes, that kind of stuff. So what I'm planning for us to do is um, to watch a couple of those videos on our science day, maybe even on some of the other days, um, to watch through the 12 weeks of the science videos. Um, and so that's kind of just gonna be what we do with science. Instead of doing, I don't have like a hands-on activity for that one. Um, and so we're gonna watch those videos and check those out. And I'll leave a link. I think they did have like a seven day trial so that you can see if you like the videos and if that's something you would wanna do. But I just felt like, like I have all these Osborne books that go along or you can mix and match them up with the science, but I just have not, taking the time to sit down and do that and read that to the kids. And I thought, this is great. You know, like if I need 10 or 15 minutes to deal with my other small children, I could put this on for my older kids, whatever. So that's what we're going to do for science. Um, and just watch through those videos and then as well as practicing our, um, memory work. All right. For Thursday, which is math, um, the skip counting takes us quite a while. The songs, you know, are kind of long and there's a lot of them. So I gave it a whole day for itself. Um, so I have this popper. I found this on Amazon. It goes up to 15 by 15. So it's not just a hundred frame, but actually 15 by 15. It was like $10. It was not very expensive. My kids have loved this. They love to sit and as we sing the songs, they like to pop them as we sing them. And so it's just kind of that hands-on, you know, tactile, as, as we're learning. And so we will sing through the songs um, and pop our popper here. But then in addition to that, um, we're gonna work on some other stuff. So my oldest, he is in third grade, you know, if you do grades, um, and we use Right Start Math, we're in level D, that is multiplication, like it's heavy on multiplication. And so we've been working on that and he's been doing his skip counting, but he has not mastered either of those yet. And so that's a focus that we're really gonna work on. So um, Right Start has, if you're familiar with that math pro program, it is very game-based. And so they have tons of games that work on factors and skip counting and multiplication. And so we will be playing that. So right, they have a, a book um, and it's got the games in it. It comes with the whole curriculum, but um, we're going to use the book and then work on some of those games. Um, some of them my six-year-old is able to do as well because they're mostly just skip counting factors type stuff. And then some of them are really just specifically about multiplication. So my eight-year-old and I will do those together, but we're going to incorporate those games and you know we've been playing them in our math lessons but keep working on those um, because if he masters multiplication then the skip counting will fall in line too and then the skip counting helps multiplication so kind of go hand in hand we also have this card game called slam bango it is um, a game that works on it's like a card game but it has math facts and it works on mastering the multiplication facts and so we've been playing this and that's been really fun so that's something else that we'll incorporate as well as we work on skip counting and multiplication on our math day. And then finally, Friday is our geography day. And um, so for geography, we have been using and loving these flashcards. This was a CC connected file um, that, you know, you print it off and then laminate and cut them. There's like four per page. Um, and so it was tedious and it was like took a while to get it done, but it has been so helpful and I'm really glad that we did it. So we have used these every week to help the kids learn their geography. And so over the break, what I intend to do is scramble these all up because we've been just, we'll do like week one, week two, we've had them by weeks. So I'm just going to give them this, we're going to go through this whole stack and they're going to be scrambled up by week just as a challenge to see 
if it's not specifically like all the rivers together, can they identify it? So on Friday, Geography Day, we will run through these flashcards. It takes us maybe five minutes to go through them usually. And then I'm gonna have the kids um, trace their maps. So I'll just, if you have one of these maps right here, there is a, where is it? Is that, yeah, this thing right here that tells you what each week is and so they can go through and they can check them as they trace them. So on Friday, I'm just gonna say, okay, go trace your map, trace everything and you know, do that for one child can trace their map while one child um, does the geography cards and then we can switch. So anyway, that that is our plan. So just one to two CC subjects per day. We'll go through all 12 weeks to review, do a little hands-on activity um, and then that's that. Now we also are, have been reading through Story of the World. That's kind of like a history and timeline and geography really connection. Um, and so we have been doing that. We'll continue doing that, but that will not necessarily go on history day. We just do that a couple days a week. So anyway, that is kind of our plan and I hope that helps. Like I said, everything is linked below and maybe that'll give you some, um, ideas or a plan to review over the holidays, or maybe you'll just do no review and you'll rest and relax and come back refreshed for week 13 in the new year. And that's okay too. So do what works for your family. But anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas and wonderful holiday season and talk to you later. Bye.